Hey, today I'm going to be teaching you the basics of automation in Reaper. Automation is a super powerful and useful tool that I use on every single mix. It helps add movement, contrast, and dynamics to even the most basic mix. In this video, I'm going to go over a few of the basic ways you can use automation in Reaper and why we use automation in our mixes to get the most out of them. If you're a little more advanced and already know how to add automation points in Reaper, feel free to skip ahead to this timestamp or watch long to see if you'll learn something new. Let's get into it. First off, let's look at how to view and access our automation lanes. This can be done one of two ways. For example, to view the volume automation lane, it's as simple as hitting the V key. You can also click the trim button on the track and up pops a dialog box with all our currently available automation lanes. When you add an effect to the channel, more automation lanes will appear in this dialog box. Now that we know how to view our volume lane, let's learn how to add and delete automation points. First, while holding shift and hovering the mouse cursor over the automation envelope, up will pop an arrow. You can now add an automation point via left clicking the envelope. By default, these snap to grid. So if you've got snap to grid on, remember that they will snap directly to the grid. Let's make the start of a volume fade in by adding another automation point over here. Now that we have two points, we can decide whether we want the audio to fade in or to fade out. For this example, I'm gonna be making a fade in. To do this, we grab our first automation point and simply drag down. This will have created a fade in from our first envelope point to our second. This is what that sounds like. Simple. We can also change the shape of our automation point via right clicking, then navigating down to set point shape and choosing any of these shapes that we want. This is super handy if you're experimenting to find the best sounding automation shape. Now, let's say for instance, we don't like our automation that we've done. We can either delete it or make it inactive. To make it inactive, we just navigate over to the track, hit bypass, and we've bypassed our automation. To delete the automation points, simply right click, creating a lasso, select both points, then hit Control X or delete to delete the points. I prefer Control X because I have to move my hands less and it's a faster shortcut. As an additional note, if we have multiple automation points on our track, we can delete them all simply via double clicking on the automation lane on the track, then Control X or delete and it'll delete all of them at once. This is the most basic way to use volume automation in your mix. Let's take this a step further by using volume automation to add energy and suspense to our mix. Let's use this chorus for an example. Say we would like to make our instrument stop so the vocal tagline has some time to shine. First, we're gonna make a selection around the area we'd like to automate by clicking and dragging our timeline. Then we're gonna click the little wheel on the volume lane on the track. Now that's automatically added an automation point at the start and end of the selection. Then we simply click in between the two automation points and drag down till the audio is fully muted. Let's hear what this sounds like with and without our volume automation. Without it. With it. The gap definitely adds impact to the following section via volume contrast and also allows the vocals to have their own moment. Using this same technique, we can automate the volume, pan, or any other parameter for whole sections of songs. My favorite use of this technique is automating the verses down a dB or turning up choruses so that your chorus hits harder and sounds bigger. This can trick our listener into thinking our choruses hit harder and sound better than they really do when all we did was automate the volume by one or two dB. For example, in this mix, I've automated the volume down by one dB in the bar prior to the chorus, just to make the chorus hit that little bit harder. This is a great technique to use in rock and heavy music as everything's already on 10, so you don't really have anywhere to go. This will help make your choruses feel more energetic and make them really cut through. Automation really comes alive when you combine multiple parameters and effects automating all at once. Take for example, this line in the final chorus of this song. The line needs to stick out, but also trail off. To stand out, but sit back in the mix and not take over the lead vocal. The way I achieve this is by combining four automation moves to make the line fit. First, we have our volume automation that boosts up the level of the line and also 
fades it out. Second, we have pan that's panning the line from left to right to make it feel like it's wrapping around your head. Third, we have our reverb time automated towards the end to create a luscious tail. And fourth, we have the wet dry mix of the reverb going to 100% at the end of each line. Let's see what the line sounds like with none of the automation. Sounds cool, but maybe a little bit boring and may get lost in the mix. Let's add back our automation. The automation really helps the line sit in the mix, yet still cut through. It has its own space and draws your attention to it without stepping on the lead vocal. The way I've automated the time and the wet and dry of the reverb is by clicking the trim button on the track. Up pops this very daunting dialog box. Now, as a new user, this can look way too daunting and like an absolute nightmare, but once you use it a few times, it gets way easier to navigate. Two really good tools in this dialog box are the highlight and the filter. For the highlight, we just type in the effect parameter we'd like to highlight. For this, we'll go with time. Then scroll across till you see time highlighted on the effect that you wish to automate. Next, you can also use filter. Simply type in the parameter you'd like into the filter section of the plugin you'd like to automate, and it will filter just to show that parameter. For instance, all I can see now for our verb is time. Those two tools make it way, way easier to navigate. Once you get familiar with this window, it's not actually that daunting and it's a heap of fun. It really shows you how much you can do with automation in the mix. For instance, you can automate any band of an EQ, you can automate parameters of a compressor or any other effect that you can think of. In this mix, I'm even automating the low end of my kick drum. There's a beat here that's quite busy that has pretty constant kicks and I didn't want it to lose punchiness by just having a flabby kick throughout. The way I dealt with this was by automating on and off a high pass on the kick drum. This is using Pro-Q3. Let's listen to the drum soloed so we can hear it be automated on and off. It's a subtle effect, but adds a heap of dynamic to the sound. These little moves will add more energy to your mix and make your mixes overall sound better due to contrast. A good thing to think about in your mixes is if everything's at 10 all the time, then nothing's at 10 at all. Your perception of something being punchy or being loud is due to other things being quiet. Using automation can help you make the punchy parts punchier and the quiet parts quieter. A common volume automation move I'll do is turn up the kick two to three dB on the start of a new section or on a kick that I really wanna punch through. This adds dynamic to the kick performance while keeping things consistent. Automation is also an awesome way to achieve effects such as vocal throws, delay throws, reverb throws, or any other effect throw. For instance, in this song, I've got the vocal being sent to a tape delay to do a delay throw. This is also combined with a reverb throw so that the vocal has a long tail. Let's listen to what that throw sounds like. You'll see here this main vocal channels being sent to a channel called Vox, Scream, Tape Delay Throw. Delay throws can make your vocal processing sound really interesting and add a bunch of life to dead spaces in the mix. This is all achieved through automation. Next, let's take a look at automating on the take in Reaper. This is essential for automating vocals such as de-breathing them, manually de-essing, or just evening out a performance. To view our automation on the take in Reaper, we right click, navigate to take, then navigate to take volume envelope. You'll notice here that you can also automate the pan, you can automate the mute, and you can automate the pitch. Automating the pitch is a really fun one because you can do things like tape stops or just down pitch vocals or just do weird effects. For this example, we're gonna be looking at our volume envelope. You can see here, I've already done all of my automation. What this is doing is de-breathing the take. We can hear what the take sounds like without this automation by deactivating this envelope. You simply go take, navigate down to take volume envelope, and click it so it no longer shows up on the track. This means that the envelope is inactive. 
this is what it sounds like. Bed, sick of feeling trapped and always stuck in my head. Fantastic vocal performance, but the breaths are a little bit too loud and they cut through the mix a little bit too much. We simply reactivate our volume envelope that's turning down all these breaths. Bed, sick of feeling trapped and always stuck in my head. Crying on. As you can hear with this, I haven't turned them all the way down. They're still a tiny bit there, but no longer anywhere near as loud as they were before. Another good effect to do with automation on a vocal is automating down the top end. Say you've got a soft section in a song and you don't want the vocal to be that in your face, you can simply automate an EQ to take off the high end of the vocal. When automating in Reaper, if you look in the trim dialog, you'll see that some of these parameters say pre-effects. This, pre this simply means that this is happening before your effect chain. The main reason I automate pre-effects is so that my processing on that channel is a little bit lighter. Say for instance, I have a compressor on my master bus and I don't want it to pump or react as much during a certain section. I'll simply turn down the volume pre-effect, aka before the compressor, to achieve this. This can mean that when your chorus hits in, the compressor really kicks in and adds punch to your mix. You'll also notice in this mix, I've done a volume automation pre-effects and post-effects. This is because I both wanted to compress and limit less before the effect and be quieter after the effects. I can only stay a while. Can't keep living in denial. Oh they think that I'm a bad bitch, but really I'm just sad bitch. Another good parameter to automate in your mixes in Reaper is the width. Here I'm using Plugin Alliance BX Control to add some much needed width to the chorus so when it hits in, it sounds wider. You can also do this with no plugins at all, just by using the width parameter on the track in Reaper. Simply go to Trim, click Width, create a selection around the section that you'd like to be wider or narrower, click on the wheel to the left of the envelope lane, then just drag down to make your section narrower. Because Reaper tracks don't have a stereo widener built into them, we can only automate down from 100%. However, again, using contrast, we can make 100% really feel like 110%. We just have to automate our other sections down from 100% so that when our big sections hit or our big moments hit, it hits 100% and sounds really wide. And that should cover the very basics of using automation in Reaper. Automation is incredibly powerful. It can be as simple or as elaborate as you want it to be. But remember, more doesn't always equal better but don't let that discourage you from using automation in new and inventive ways. It really makes your mixes interesting. Hopefully this video has given you the tools you need to use automation in Reaper. Don't forget to hit subscribe and leave a comment if you'd like to see any other content. Thanks so much, I'll see you later.